Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's episode, I'm gonna be covering the top things to do in Zadar, Croatia. Before we begin, if you haven't done so already, make sure to press the subscribe button below. Doing so really helps support my small channel and enables me to continue making this type of content in the future. With that said, this is Backpack Gringo providing you with the best things to do in Zadar. Starting off our list of top things to do is a visit to the Sea Organ. Located right on the Riva Zadar, this sound installation consists of a series of pipes and whistles embedded into the stairs by the sea. The movement of the waves causes the pipes to create an eerie melodic sound. About 200 feet away from the Sea Organ, you can also find the Greeting to the Sun art display. This modern installation consists of 300 glass plates with solar panels below that generate energy during the day. In the evening, this energy powers a fun light display to see. This also gets pretty popular when the sun goes down, because the Riva is said to be the best place to catch the sunset in the city. If you stroll out before sunset each day, the Riva will be lined with locals and tourists who come to see the picturesque sunsets. Just make sure to show up a little early so you can grab a spot as it does get crowded later on. The next place I'd recommend on visiting is the Roman Forum. This historical site dates back to the 1st century AD and was the center of public life in the ancient Roman city of Yadar, which is the historical name for the now present city. Here you can find well-preserved columns and fragments of ancient buildings. Also, right inside the Roman Forum is the Church of St. Donatus. This pre-Romanesque church was built in the 9th century and is one of the most significant examples of early medieval architecture in Croatia. This building originally served as a church and later as a cathedral, and it's free to enter and explore. If you're looking to escape the heat and go for a swim, make sure to visit the Golden Wave Beach. This is a fun local spot that has a bar slash food spot, a saltwater pool, and also really high diving boards. A lot of people come here to sunbathe, and there's also some small local places around this area as well for people to relax in front of the water. The next thing I'd recommend on doing is to make a day trip up to visit the famous Plitvica Lakes National Park. This is hands down one of the most beautiful places I've visited in Croatia, and it's just under a two hour drive away from Zadar. Despite being a little far, I can guarantee you that you'll be blown away by the views. To get there, you can drive, get on a bus, or you can sign up for a tour which will provide transportation to the park. Tickets costed us 40 euros per person, but this price does change depending on the time and date. At the park, there's two entrances to choose from. We'd recommend going through entrance one as you get to start your hike at the lower lakes, which, in my opinion, provides much better views. They also have multiple trails that you can take as well, and we ended up taking trail C, which is the second longest and took us around three to four hours total. Thank you. 
In Zadar, another great place to stop by is the Land Gate. This 16th century gate once served as the main entrance through the city's fortified walls into the old town. The gate features a central arch for carriages and two smaller arches for pedestrians. The gate is located in an area called Fosha and it sits alongside the Fosha Harbor. Now, right next to the land gate, you'll find the main parks in Zadar, the Queen Yelena Madievka Park, and the Park of Vladimir Nazor. The Queen Yelena Madievka Park is the oldest park in the city and said to be the first public park in Dalmatia. This park actually sits higher than the old town as it was built on top of the city's military bastion. This is a great park to visit as you can get some good views of the land gate and the harbor from above. And also, you can hike to the top of the park to get some great 360 views of the city. After you hike back down, you can conveniently cross the street to enter the expansive park of Vladimir Nazor. The park opened in 1890, and it stands as the largest park in Zadar. This is the perfect escape from the city, as it's not very crowded and has plenty of shaded benches to sit down and relax. The last and final place on our list of best things to do in Zadar is to visit the local market. The Market Zadar, often referred to as the Green Market, is a place where vendors set up stalls to sell a variety of goods. Here, you'll find fruits, vegetables, cheeses, meats, clothes, and many other things as well. They also have a building where they sell all the seafood, but it smelled really bad so I couldn't really wander around there. This is a great place to meet some locals and try out some local, regional foods and snacks. A special thanks to everyone who has made it this far in the video. I hope you find this guide useful and that it helps you plan your next trip to Zadar. Feel free to leave any questions or thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, we would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Doing so really helps out our new platform, enables us to continue making this kind of content, and allows these types of videos to be shared with fellow travelers. So thanks again for tuning into another video brought to you by yours truly, Backpack Gringo.